President Buhari restates commitment to Nigeria's unity insists not only on sacrosins but non-negotiable. African Union 11th Extraordinary Summit to conclude discussions on reforms in line with Agenda 2063. The forthright in persecution and trial of high-profile criminal crime suspects, experts pass stakeholders in justice system. On Good Morning, on Good Morning Nigeria today, we focus on care for the elderly in Nigeria. Right, uh, Kingsley, uh, our focus this morning is on care for the elderly in Nigeria, uh, generally male or female. But then I know you've heard this uh, cliche, you know, going about that men feel that they're more endangered, especially in old age. Well, that's true. I mean, it's, uh, it's a story that has been going around and uh, we do hope that things will be taken care of going forward. Well, the truth is that, you know, a lot of times uh, men have been regarded uh, as a stronger sex who dominate and rule the world. They have power, unlimited resources to determine and direct the affairs in almost every area of their lives. All right. Uh, but not only do uh, men act that way when they are young and strong, but uh, precisely when they are active. But of course, uh, the day comes and the time comes when uh, old age sets in and uh, they become weak and therefore vulnerable. Well, uh, where you, I, I understand where you're held, heading to Kingsley, but you know, old people, especially men, are often seen to be, you know, seen to be lonely amongst the family members. Attention is paid to the old, uh, more, or let's say the older women, let's say, you know, children tend to take care of their moms more than their dads. Uh, some people have argued that. Well, that's true. I mean, that's uh, part of what is going on. I'm sure you, you must have uh, seen some messages circulating on the social media uh, by accident, by the way, because yeah. the, the messages have been circulating more amongst the male folk uh, with regard to what happens uh, when they get advanced in age uh, and their spouse also uh, gets advanced in age, that the children of, uh, of the marriage oftentimes uh, tend to have preferential treatment for their mothers rather than uh, for uh, their fathers. Well, we've seen instances too, you know, where, you know, uh, moms had to go and care for their grandchildren, you know, and uh, when they do that, the men are left alone, you know, for that period of time. <laughs> hey, well, that's the so-called omugwa, uh, part of what, uh, what happens, uh, it's, it's in vogue now. Uh, not necessarily because they are in old age, but because when they advance in age, uh, they need to go and take care of uh, the newborn grandchildren. But beyond that, you yeah. also have a situation uh, where the children would invite uh, their mom over uh, and then, of course, leave your dad uh, to be alone. And sometimes this could be for prolonged uh, periods of, uh, of time. And it's generating quite some debate, uh, obviously, as to how uh, the men would respond. That is to say that there seems to be emotional neglect of, uh, of the father uh, when he advances in age, while there is, once again, preferential treatment for the mom. So, well, the question, you know, this morning <coughs> is, you know, why do parents, uh, children actually give more preferential treatment to their, their mothers, you know, as against their fathers? And, of course, uh, how did we eventually, how did we get to this kind of practice here in Nigeria? But generally, <coughs> we're looking at caring for the elderly in Nigeria. That's a huge, huge challenge. Kingsley. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. And, and precisely part of what we are saying is you, you find it more exacerbated with Nigerians who are in diaspora, uh, where, of course, they will, uh, some of them who can afford it uh, will invite uh, their parents over. over. In this case, mostly the mom. And she stays there for several months. When, she's come, when she comes back, her skin is glowing. In the meantime, the dad is at home. And um, that's the, that's the issue. So how does, okay. it, how does it that survive? And of course, by the way, there's, there's a, a real life story. Uh, a lady has uh, confessed that 
her mom has a spare key to her, to her house. Uh, but in the meantime, that if the father were to come around, and this is not on account of uh, any antagonistic relationship they had when she was young, but any time the dad makes the mistake of coming uh, to her house without notice, that she takes, her, takes him to uh, the nearest bus station and then uh, sends him back home. <laughs> in the meantime, the mom has a spare key to the house. So <laughs> how do you deal with that? All right, Kingsley. <laughs> this is some of the issues we'll be looking at this morning. On uh, That's our focus on Good Morning Nigeria today, caring for the elderly. And uh, there are a lot of challenges, especially in this part of the world. A lot of people <coughs> tend to, you know, not care for their parents. And uh, we have very few old people's homes here in Nigeria. It's not something that is part of our culture. Well, that's true. But, but then you still have elderly people who are neglected. That's no, no doubt when, about that. But you know, the perspective, as you have indicated, it has to do with what appears now to be the discrimination in favor of mothers uh, versus men. You might as well say it's the battle of the sexes. All right, I'm Ruda and I'm welcoming you to the last edition for this week. We're live on Africa's largest television network, the NTA. And it is Good Morning Nigeria. And I'm Kingsley Osadola. I joined Rhoda, my colleague, and also welcoming you to the program, in the course of which we have our regular companion segments. And this will include Municipal Review, Business, Sports, Foreign, and others. In the meantime, let's join our colleague to take the highlights of the morning news, and here's Musbao Dan Wahab. Good morning, Musbao. Good morning, Kingsley. Welcome to the news. The political and security situation in Guinea-Bissau ahead of elections in the West African nation took center stage as President Mohamed Buhari played host to President Jose Mario Vaz. Uh, Guinea-Bissau was scheduled to hold elections on the, on the 18th of November, but uh, we uh, came to the conclusion that it won't be possible. Nigeria has been uh, a great supporter of the process in Guinea-Bissau, the voter registration process going on. That's the reason why I came to see my older brother, so that I can seek his advice and brief him about the situation. African leaders are expected to conclude discussions on the reform of the continental body and its organs in Ethiopia, so as to enable it achieve peace, development and transformation as envisaged by Agenda 2063. In back home, President Mohamed Buhari is reassuring Nigerians of the irrevocable commitment of his administration towards achieving the course of national unity and prosperity. Speaking of a former launch and unveiling of the Buhari Unity Band, the president maintains that Nigeria's unity is not only sacrosanct but non negotiable. Patriots who have in the past sacrificed so much some even their lives in defense of our nation. I want to commend the good governors and ambassadors of Nigeria who initiated this project for their sense of patriotism and commitment. Let me assure you that the government remains committed to advancing the cause of national unity and progress. Nigeria held a state men have once again stressed the importance of sustainable peace and harmonious coexistence for national development and economic growth. This was at a one-day public lecture and official launching of Nigeria 100 years historic bonding and legends compendium. We are all actors in the political environment today and we are creating history which will become part of the totality of our nation. Let us sustain this diversity through dignity, through sincerity, through genuineness of purpose, and through the abiding trust in the guidance of the Almighty God. In less than 100 days from now, this country is going into elections so that we begin to talk to our people out there that peace is the way to go. Experts in the nation's justice system have called for a forthright prosecution and trial of high-profile financial crime suspects. The call came in a workshop for heads of courts and other stakeholders in the evaluation of a fight against corruption. has made a mess of our judicial process and it is in the enlightened interest of the judiciary and the entire legal profession to restore 
this confidence in the process. Most of these delays are hinged on the defense. The Nigerian army says in the last three years it has made significant improvements in the renovation and reconstruction of its facilities. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuku Brate made this submission when he received members of the National Assembly Committee on Army. As you go around, you will see the efforts with great difference in terms of facility development, upliftment of the standard of our barrack facilities. But still, there is still much, much to be done. The funding still remains a challenge, and we understand and we appreciate the role the National Assembly is doing. We want to commend the Nigerian Army for keeping to its constitutional responsibility of protecting the territorial integrity of our country. We also, by meeting with uh, various communities, to hear from them uh, their relationship with the Army. The Nigerian Air Force through Air Task Force of Operation Lafayette Dole has commenced Operation Green Sweep against Boko Haram terrorists in the northeast. Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola, says the air interdiction operation targets selected Boko Haram terrorist locations within the fringes of Lake Chad and areas around the Alagano Forest, close to Sambisa in Bruno State. This is with a view towards degrading the remnants of the terrorists, curtailing the actions and denying them bases from where they could launch attacks. Airstrikes by NAV aircraft at the launch of the operation, however, resulted in the destruction of several terrorists at Sharama on the Lake Chad Green Fringes. About the news this morning, Good Morning Nigeria will continue with uh, Kinsley and Rhoda after this break. Unemployment, notably youth unemployment, features strongly in our party's manifesto. We intend to attack the problem frontally through revival of agriculture. Actually, uh, I bought an acre of land for 60k like 2012, and presently I have a cassava farm and a yam farm. Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive. Be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. Team Huddle. But we lost. Don't be tired, guys. This isn't a loss. It's a practice for winning. Nothing makes a mother prouder than seeing her child growing up. 
But I know as he learns to lead, he'll face even more dirt, germs, and risk of illness. That's why in changing seasons, you need strong dental protection. Because dental protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Growing up needs dental protection. I'm from Tego, Isako BJ. I'm from Delta Stick Company. At that 2005, the company was privatized. Those that were working, that were caught up with the privatization, were laid off. No arrangement for the payment of anything. They were denied their pension rights. So in 2005 through 2017, we have been struggling how we can be put back on pension. We staged a lot of demonstration under the rain, under the sun. The government did not listen. The marginalization for the past 13 good years by successive administration, the sufferings we'll be going through, the loss of human dignity and no hope for livelihood from July 31st. 2018. The monthly patients start coming to the patients. We also want to be very, very thankful to President Bohama Dubuari. He's God sent. You in the air conditioned office with the itchy throat. Strap cells. Go to the spotlights with the raspy throat. Strap cells. You in the pollution. It's you. Dry throat. Strap cells. Hello in the downpour with the scratchy throat. Take Strepsils. Strepsils, with its soothing medicinal ingredients, will heal the harm done to your throat from external factors. Strepsils. Strepsils. Strepsils, for a dry, itchy, raspy, scratchy throat. Brought us as usual. As usual. Mm. You have no problem. Uh, for the three people. You are welcome, sir. <laughs> as usual, yeah? You're welcome. You take that one. Yeah, yeah, you take that one. Yeah. 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 You don't understand. We want Nigeria homegrown rights. Finish. You don't have. You don't have. Join the rice revolution today. No other rice that tastes like Nigerian rice. Are you sorry? Look, we got the Nigerian rice we are talking about. Chocolate made in Nigerian rice. Healthy food. I'm going to bring Mrs. Mobu, Lady Abedi Mobu, to come to chocolate rice of made in Nigeria here. Yeah. <laughs> and see how it is made. Correct, correct. How they are cooking. Correct. <laughs> Homegrown rice are good for your health. It has boosts our economy and I give employment to our people. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. What's up? His friends didn't come. Hey, let's practice. But you're going out. Don't worry about me. Nothing satisfies a mother more than seeing a child grow up. But I know as he sweats, he'll face the risk of germs, which can cause skin irritation. That's why you need the new best ever dental cool. It's new advanced formulation with extra menthol, protects from up to 100 illness causing germs, and gives your family icy cool freshness. Growing up needs dental protection. All right, you're welcome back. And if you've just joined us, it's still Good Morning Nigeria. Now let's update you on the world of business as commerce and industry correspondents urge federal government to secure more foreign direct investment to improve the economy. We'll get more details now from our business news correspondent, Comfort Amadou. A warm welcome. Creation of enabling environment for ease of doing business and implementation of policies that will attract more foreign direct investment, key to boosting Nigeria's economy, where again the thrust of discuss as commerce and industry correspondents Association of Nigeria seek and launch a compendium. Discussions at the event had on the need for the federal government to pay special attention to rules and financial bottlenecks that are hindering the growth and development of micro, small and medium enterprises as the subsector is key to the country's economic development. And once this foreign direct investment is attracted, our feeble economy will become stronger. And what happens to a stronger economy, it translates into good and better living standard for the people. President Mahmoud Buhari's fiscal strategy of zero export program, which is adequately addressing constraints of the export sector, was also acknowledged as a right step. There was also emphasis on the implementation of the strategy on non-oil exports to enable the country increase its foreign exchange reserve to $150 billion within the next 10 years. 
After 25 years of existence, the federal government is reviewing the reviewing the just man. and repositioning it to become an economic and industrial development agency which will move Nigeria to the next level of development. The quantity of CCMC that was exported from Nigeria was in excess of 300,000 metric tons. One ton of CCMC can cost as much as 400,000 naira. Meanwhile, the African Export-Import Bank on the sidelines of the African Investment Forum launched a project preparation facility in Johannesburg, South Africa, to increase the availability of viable projects in Africa that are bankable to investors. African Bank President Professor Benedict Orama said the facility is to support export growth and diversification and assimilation of African commodities into global value chains, as well as increase volume and flow of tradable goods and services in Africa's trade corridors. African Bank set up the APPF with an initial seed capital investment of $15 million. And that report takes us to the closing figures of trades on the floor of the exchange. And that's business news. I'm Comfort Amadou. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Comfort, for the business package. Next for us now is a review of the stories in some of today's newspapers. Mr. Rivera, Bayer Atelier is with us on the studios for today's session. Baya, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Kensley. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. And good morning, Bye. Nigeria. It's good to have you join us this morning. All right. Okay, let's uh, begin with the Nigerian pilot. The uh, Nigerian pilot from top to bottom. We have uh, a number of stories there. It says, 2019, I'm willing to give the Niger Delta total control of oil revenue. That's according to article. Details on page 9. Four family members die, others hospitalized after a mala meal, as on page six. Lead story says, Nigeria's unity not negotiable. It's going to President Buhari with three riders. Launches Buhari unity ban to kick off electionary campaign. Says it's meant to keep Nigeria united towards 2019 elections. And expresses concern over growing threats to unity and build up to the elections. You can see the president there at the launch of the unity ban at the Aso Villa yesterday. Below that is a headline, Nigeria to become world's biggest importer of rice by 2019. And that's attributed to the USDA, that's United States Department of Agriculture. Details on page six. Below that, you have other headlines. Minimum wage, we are ready for showdown. NLC tells NGF, that's Governor's Forum. And Gandu Jesus, daily Nigerian for three billion naira over dollar video scandal. We will not fail Nigerians in 2019, says our next chairman. And uh, ethno-religious differences, Sultan pleads with Nigerians to live in peace, page five. All right, so now let's move over to the New Telegraph. On the New Telegraph, uh, we'll start from the top, and that's um, on uh, the minimum wage story that uh, Casey just read. It says, 30,000 hour minimum wage. NLC dares government to sack workers. Uh, with a right there, it says, Waba, uh, Nigerian governor's firm, can't intimidate labor with blackmail. And uh, below the nameplate now, it says, Sultan, Nigerians must leave in peace. That's a story that's trending on page five. And um, uh, reps accuse uh, 12 shipping firms of diverting federal government's 300 
million dollars. That story that's on page three. A story of training yesterday it says 24 university students held for cyber fraud, exotic cars recover. That's on page eight. And the lead story for the New Telegraph this morning, it says PDP leaders behind my travail, says Oshumale. PDP leaders behind my travail, says Oshumale. With uh, two riders there, says APC chair, accusation of corruption must stop. And Saraki were waiting to see what Bahari will do. That's the lead story. You can read more on it on the New Telegraph. It's on page two. All right, uh, I got bio. Let, let's see. Well, let's begin with the labor story, and that's uh, the new uh, the, the issue of the minimum wage. Yes, the, talking about labor and uh, the governor's forum, yeah. they have all exhausted their carrot. They are now using the stick. The first to wield the stick was the governor's forum, that if they must implement 30,000, yeah. then they will have to sack. And Labour has responded by saying that sacking workers to pay 30,000, they are not, it's not a, a, a matter that is uh, intimidating uh, the Labour. And Labour says that all political officers should be wary of one fact, that they will give instructions to all workers to be ready to vote out any political office holder or party that is against the implementation of 30,000 minimum wage. Uh, you may be recalled that the Governor's Forum has said that they will be constrained to sack workers if they have to pay 30,000. 30, and that is the response that has come from Labour. But the interesting thing about this is that Labour is saying that the Governor's Forum is not noted as a negotiating partner. The states of the Federation are the negotiating partners and they were represented by six governors representing each of the geopolitical zones. And the concomitant uh, parallel is that Labour comprises of NLC, TUC, and ULC. Yeah. Are they also negotiating as one entity or also as a forum of organized labor? But meanwhile, the other concern strike is that of the academic staff of union yesterday that went into a meeting with the federal government uh, delegation. Some papers are reporting a deadlock, but I think it's a misrepresentation of what happened. The president of uh, ASU, uh, Professor Oguyemi says that the meeting was open, opened up on the issues, the issues were discussed, and they are likely going back today to discuss further on this. And the Minister of Labour, who was also there, has indicated that it's very hopeful that between now and next week, uh, they will reach some form of agreement. So negotiations are still on, and it's not correct to say that uh, the, the negotiations have dead blocked. By your, your call yesterday, the uh, issue of the ASO strike came yes. up. Uh, now you're talking about the negotiations. Of course, the papers reported yesterday that the negotiations were due to begin yesterday. Who are those that are negotiating? Do we have the details? I'm asking this question against the background of what you just discussed with regard to uh, the uh, new minimum wage. Now, uh, the federal government are state governments that own universities also part of the negotiations? Or with the federal government and ASU and whoever else, after they finish negotiating, they will now impose whatever they have negotiated on state the governments states. to use to run their state universities. Because state universities are also part of the ASU strike. Yes. Or are private universities. Of course, also, nobody would dare to have a private university to come and negotiate with them. You remember we were discussing this, this point yesterday. Well, so far, those that were at the opening meeting included yeah. the Minister of Labor, uh, the mm -hmm. Minister of Education is required to join them today yes. and the representative of uh, the Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Universities. Uh, talks are ongoing, but uh, the ASU is saying that uh, Nigerian universities have been subjected to 20 years of what it called a recolonization uh, in the supposed democracy. And however, Nigerian students and parents are already fed up with strikes. Yeah. Within 19 years, we had four years put together of strikes by academic staff union That's right. over yeah. the same issue. So it, I think the, we need to get to a conclusion and put this behind us. All right, uh, Bayo, let's quickly take a look at the, the Daily Trust very quickly. Uh, the Daily Trust, just behind, uh, below the nameplate, it says, Sultan Tass Nigerians in peaceful coexistence. Many governors ready to pay more than 30,000 naira, says NLC. And the lead story says, 821 jostle for 29 guba seats. And that's the number of candidates for the 2019 general elections uh, for gubernatorial seats. A total of uh, 821. And they're just going for... 29 seats, that's a lot, Bayer. Yes, uh, 
821 people are contesting to be governors, and that is in 29 states. And if you go by the data that the Daily Trust provided, Imo State has 68 gubernatorial uh, contestants in, in that election. Sokoto, Akwaiba, and Borulu, each of them have 41 contestants. That means 41 political parties are fielding candidates. Uh, Zamfara, Ogun, and uh, Enugu also has about uh, 39. There are some states that just have two or three, or some just two. Uh, the, basically, the two front runners are contesting, and those are about three states. So it, it shows that, that there's going to be keen contest in the March uh, second gubernatorial election 2019. Yeah, well, Bayo, one of the uh, presidential uh, uh, aspirants or candidates has already stepped down. That's uh, Dr. Lucia Gumimiko, who yeah. uh, was former governor of Ondo State, a member of the uh, Zenith Labour Party. And the argument of the Zenith Labour Party is that there are too many presidential candidates out of 91 political parties. I think there are some 68 or 69 candidates that are uh, vying to become president. So we'll see how things go. Well, the elections are just about three months or so away. And, yes, but um, he has become a, a senatorial candidate. Somebody has stepped down for him to it, become a senatorial it, it, that's candidate. That's right, but not for the presidential election. election. You yes. still have some. They yes. said there were just too many of them, you know, for the presidential elections. Uh, but in Madagascar, recently, they had their presidential election. 36 candidates. Okay, Daily Sun newspaper is uh, next for us very quickly. Uh, beside the nameplate, Exaxaki facing murder charges. That's according to Aero 5, page 6. This story, bribery allegation. Osho Mori threatens Saraki with court action. It has a rider, it's an empty boast. That's according to the Senate President. And below the photograph there, showing the President uh, being decorated with the Road Trip Polo uh, Champion Award. I know how Boko Haram started. That's according to Atiku, former Vice President. NAF launches Operation Green Sweep to wipe out terrorists and neutralize his cause. One killed as Boko Haram burns down Boronu village. And the other stories on minimum wage and ANEC we have earlier taken. Bio, that's, yes. uh, those stories speak for themselves, I believe. The same yes. thing with the title of the editorial. Yes, the concern is the story about the Boko Haram. It's becoming frequent now. Uh, this one you reported now happened uh, just at a, a town, a village, Mam Mamanti, which is about seven kilometers from Maiduguri. Just about a couple of days ago, there was another attack at Bali village, which is also about five kilometers in the outskirts of Maiduguri. And if you go by the pattern of the attack, they come there, set the villages ablaze, just get foodstuffs and livestock and, and go away. So it shows desperation on the part of the insurgents. They are now uh, press, hard pressed and they come to attack for foodstuff. And so that is a possible in, uh, pos positive indication for the Air Force particularly to be able to trace them. And from all instances, they are coming straying away from still the same Sambisa forest. Sambisa area. I, and you know that uh, only recently, uh, the military command rejected the Operation Lafayette Adole. That's the personnel. Uh, that are handling that, and we do hope that um, they will continue to uh, record gains against the uh, insurgents. Now, to our editorial this morning, it's coming from the Punch newspaper, and it's at page 20. Uh, it says, Too many deaths on our roads. Deaths on the highway is the matter of concern that uh, the editorial is working on, and the statistics are very grim. Uh, it says, Between June and September, as many as 1,331 people had died on the highway between uh, Lagos and Ugo. And uh, between the month of June and September, 1,331 were killed in, on our highway. And it, it has broadened up. The National Bureau of Statistics says that we have a total of about 11.65 vehicles plying Nigerian highway. And about 20,000 are always involved in uh, about crashes. And most of the causes of these crashes are not far-fetched. They are basically overspeeding poor state of the vehicles themselves, the poor condition of the roads, and therefore the editorial is happening on state and federal government to make it a matter of priority, the construction and rehabilitation of the roads. They have also uh, pressed on the Federal Road Safety Commission to be very strict with uh, drivers, particularly as there are incidences of drivers being very careless, over speeding, not obeying traffic rules, and particularly those of them that drive under the influence, and the influence of alcohol or some drugs. And these, they say, are factors that are a matter of concern. And you know, as he often said, we are the ember months. It's yeah. the month for which road safety is always so high alert on the highway. And we all need to stay alive at least towards to see the next year coming. Okay, Bayer, right. thank, thank you. you uh, just one thing, uh, before we thank Bayer and sign him off, what, what happened, whatever happened to the speed delimiter? 
Yeah. Uh, also, there was a lot of uh, motion and movement. Uh, with With regard to that, a couple of years ago, uh, couple but of years. yeah, but not much has been heard of. Just last year, there was a deadline it, also. There for, was a for deadline vehicles last year. Install. It was meant for commercial vehicles. Yes. And there was an intervention by the National Assembly, particularly relating to the price and the cost. And uh, that is how it has gone under. But I think the road safety is working on the guideline as provided by from the intervention by the National Assembly. All right, thank you very much, Maya. Thank you, too. Hopefully we'll see you again on Monday morning. Monday. See you. All right, you're still watching Good Morning Nigeria. We'll take a short break now, and when we come back, a very, very important issue that affects us as um, Africans, as Nigerians, uh, it's, it's talking about caring for the elderly in our society. We'll be back in just a moment. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe, against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom. Peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Team Huddle. But we lost. Don't be tired, guys. This isn't a loss. It's a practice for winning. Nothing makes a mother prouder than seeing her child growing up. But I know as he learns to lead, he'll face even more dirt, germs, and risk of illness. That's why in changing seasons, you need strong dental protection. Because dental protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Growing up needs dental protection. Maggie, Maggie who am I? I'm a caregiver, a slayer, a boss lady, a foodie. I am the chief quality inspector and chief organizer. And when I'm cooking with my Maggie star, I become a kitchen grand master. Every day, you choose to make the difference. That's why you choose Maggie Star, made from natural soya beans and other carefully selected ingredients to help you cook the difference. I am the chief enjoyment officer, and I'm the magnet that brings my family together. Need I say more? <laughs> but best of all, I love what I do. With Maggie, cook the difference. Fake news which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information.
What you gonna yarn? What did the yarn serve? I don't understand though. Because they spoil our town, our environment. And they cause our people serious harm. Did it as he said? No. Me! I don't do it again, Sam Sam. Because why? Change begins with me. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. What's up? His friends didn't come. Hey, let's practice. But you're going out. Don't worry about me. Nothing satisfies a mother more than seeing a child grow up. But I know as he sweats, he'll face the risk of germs, which can cause skin irritation. That's why you need the new Best Ever Dental Cool. Its new advanced formulation with extra menthol protects from up to 100 illness causing germs and gives your family icy cool freshness. Bye. Growing up needs dental protection. All right, you're welcome back.